This is Tom Bernanke, and today I am talking about unequal legs, unequal knees, hips, back pain. This is called limb length discrepancy, and this is a very misunderstood topic. I see it mentioned on TV shows, movies all the time, but there's not a lot written about it. And all the stuff that's written talks about like limb lengthening surgeries, putting on those big circular fixators. This is the practical guide of stuff that we can do right away and make it help. But the key is there are true limb length discrepancies like congenital problems, uh, like neurological conditions, spinal problems when you're born. And there is the second part, which is if you're run over by a truck, if you fell off a roof and you crushed your legs or recently had a knee replacement, this type of stuff we'll talk about a little bit, but the practical stuff is more, what if one hip hurts or one knee hurts? What if one foot is turned out a little bit more than the other foot? What if you're a little bit off balance? What if one shoulder is lower than the other shoulder? This is the type of unequal legs, the limb length discrepancies we're talking about and we're getting started, but first I need your help. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. We appreciate your likes, your subscribes, your comment. We really love hearing if this stuff helps. It really makes a big difference for us, so thank you. So limb length discrepancies are common. I would say 99% of people have at least a little bit. That means when you're putting on one shoe or measuring one foot or one knee, they're off by at least a little bit on one side or the other. It's true for me, it's really true for me because I had an injury that derailed my college football career a little bit, uh, that stopped me from playing sports like 10 years afterwards at a high level until I figured out what to do by going to medical school, by becoming a podiatrist and treating myself. And it's a lot of work for a lot of people depending on how severe it is because these are real big problems. So this is my legs right here. My left leg, I had surgery, I tore my hamstring. So you can see my right foot, I can bend up pretty easily. And my left leg has much less motion. So see that, that's about a 10 degree motion and I have to turn out to compensate for it. That's how limb length discrepancy starts. Scar tissue, tightness, and you can see this one goes about 10 degrees above 90, whereas that one can't make it. That's about a 10 degree difference. So my knee has to turn in a little bit and my foot has to turn out. And you can see this guy running right here uh, is pretty flexible. His heels line up with his Achilles tendon going up the leg. It's not really buckling outward. Whereas on the other hand, when you get to somebody older, you can start seeing they don't have that upward flexibility and their ankle, the inside ankle bone buckles in and the foot has to twist out. You can see this guy on his right side is turning out a little bit more than the left. He's kind of all over the place. He's not equal through uh, his calf muscles. And then this is a more young person who's really buckling out. You could tell they're not symmetrical their feet are buckling out. This is called overpronation. They're compensating through their calf, their thigh, their hamstring, a lot of muscles. So I'm gonna start by saying number one, always see your doctor because in the comments, people sometimes really misread and mishear what's being said in some of these videos. And what I mean by that is if you have a spinal tumor, if you have spina bifida, if you have conditions like neurological conditions like scoliosis or severe deformities, those are best served by seeing a doctor and getting evaluated because this is more general advice on tips and stuff that can help, but you want to get diagnosed properly because misdiagnosis with the wrong treatment could be a big problem. So number one, when you go see a podiatrist, you wanna get assessed for neurological conditions. You wanna get assessed for back pain, scoliosis, hip pain, and scoliosis is a curved spine. Uh, that can definitely cause your hips to be off, your knees to be off. What I found though, personally, and I did spend time at a place called the Baltimore Limb Deformity Center. Uh, I've gone to a lot of conferences and speaking to a lot of these world experts, they basically told me that about 99% of the time they find that it's musculoskeletal tightness, injuries that throw people off balance. Rarely is it that congenital deformity, rarely is it that neurological deformity, and rarely is it being crushed by getting run over the truck. But that is true, these things do happen, so you have to be aware of them. Don't take these comments out of context. So we're talking about acquired limb length deformities. So when you go see your podiatrist, 
what I would do normally is we would measure where are your ankles, where are your feet, where are your calf muscles, your hamstrings, your hips, your lower back. Is there a curvature in the back? Is one hip tighter than the other? We would do an x-ray. Is one bone shorter than the other? But rarely, I mean 99% of the time, this is not true. X-rays, MRIs, CT scans, scanograms, this stuff's all possible. But anytime I've done this stuff, rarely are the bones not the same length unless a hip replacement or a knee replacement or something has occurred that's really throwing you off. But even then, there's a lot of stuff that we can do and we talk about that in this video. But a gait analysis and a biomechanical exam is the key. You don't wanna pursue treatments because the real root has to be established. For example, do you have skirt tissue? Did you pull a muscle that you're compensating for? It's usually not the bone that you were born with, but it's usually you tweaked a muscle, you injured yourself in college, you pulled something running, it's staying sore because you have to work 40 hours on your feet every single week. These are the problems that really throw people off. And a biomechanical exam with a qualified professional can really make that difference. And that's gonna make all the difference in the treatments we talk about. So getting to surgery, if a bone really is off, I did a mini fellowship uh, with a great doctor and what he would actually do is cut the bone in the middle and put those circular fixators with pins below and above and you turn the dial about uh, a quarter of a millimeter every day or every couple days and what happens is as the bone heals, it heals longer until it's the proper length. That rarely needs to be done. These are very complex surgeries and a lot of the times, unless it's a major problem, this is not needed. But there's a great doctor in Chicago, Dr. Rodriguez, who does a great job for foot and ankle deformities. If this is you, this might be the man to talk to rather than trying some of this stuff because they do. these are very complicated surgeries. They have to lengthen muscles, tendons, bones, use circular fixators in some cases, uh, move and lengthen nerves as well. Uh, so this stuff is possible, but this isn't for the average person. That being said, a lot of the times I've seen very successful cases, great outcomes by these procedures where the bones are lengthened or shortened. So the first thing you wanna do is identify where the problem's coming from. And it usually starts with a sore or injured muscle. So the first thing you wanna do is massage and ice that muscle. With the sore muscle or tendon, sometimes the worst thing you can do is start stretching right away. What you really wanna do is get the inflammation down and get the soreness down. Anti-inflammatory pills can help, but also icing and massaging. Here, we're big fans of icing and massaging more than pills. So this is a cryosphere I just showed. It's better for muscles uh, rather than the foot, but these rubber balls are pretty good for the bottom of the foot. You can find these everywhere for like a dollar. They can break up stiff scar tissue in the bottom of your foot in your plantar fascia. You can put all your body weight on them, or you can use a massage roller stick. These things are like 10 bucks. I put some links in my show notes, but basically for your calf muscles, for your hamstrings, for your thigh muscles, wherever you find that the muscles are tighter and uneven, you can get rid of the inflammation, the swelling. And as that soreness comes down, the muscles, the ligaments, and the tendons will naturally become more flexible. So a few minute warm up of massaging and icing could make you much more flexible almost mm -hmm. instantly. And that will help more than any type of stretching. But that's when you do the stretching. So 30 seconds at a time, that can gradually get stiff muscles, stiff tendons to loosen up. So that's what I like to do, warm up and then stretch. Something that can work really well too are creams. So there's anti-inflammatory creams, there's compound pharmacies, or you can use things like BioFreeze that will work just as well as ice. These things have been shown to be effective. Creams can work really good too. So once these muscles loosen up, ease up. There's something I like is called shockwave therapy at the same time. If there's scar tissue or damaged tissue, I'm a big fan of using shockwave therapy or even laser to help loosen up these muscles and these tight contractors and tendons. The studies have been very, very good lately, uh, especially double randomized trials. Um, and what happens is I get a lot of benefit out of these. I know it's newer technology. A lot of times insurance doesn't cover this, but if the stretching and the icing and the massaging isn't getting you great success, you might wanna find a practitioner that can help with this type of stuff because the soft tissue and the scar tissue after a long time, 
needs to be loosened up to get you equal. The easiest thing you can do though is, especially now that everybody's at home, get a great slipper. So as an example, this is my house slipper right here. I have tightness in one leg because I needed surgery in the past. And you can see here, I have a pad that provides a little bit of a lift. So the lift really benefits me. You could see they're orthotic type slippers inside the slipper. Wearing these in the winter makes a big, big difference for me. So I know how much I need on one side or the other, and it becomes complicated, but really you can trial. Does one side help for a couple weeks versus getting rid of the pad? That's how you wanna experiment. Not only do we have to measure, but you also have to try and make sure it's working. So the next thing is, do you want a shoe that's flexible like this? or do you want something more supportive? On the one end of the spectrum, there's these shoes called maximalist shoes. So you can see here, this has something called a rocker bottom. So when you land, your foot kind of rolls through versus a shoe without a rocker bottom, it kind of collapses and it has to bend. So when you're tight through your joints and your ligaments, you want something to kind of roll through, especially if you have ankle arthritis, tight joints, tight ligaments that don't compensate for other parts of your body. The next thing that you can do is over-the-counter inserts like this. You can start with something low cost. People never believe me, but watch this right here. When I push down, see how that flattens out? You can see right there, it flattens out and your foot twists and compensates in different ways. On the other hand, an over-the-counter insert, look, I'm pushing, it's not really flattening out. And you know what, some people think I'm playing a trick to sell an orthotic, believe me, that's not where people make money. These are basically products where doctors break even, or at least I do. So this stuff really does work. The literature really does work, and these are not expensive things. On the other hand, take a look right here. A custom orthotic is much more supportive right here, but it is pricier. So some are a little bit more expensive, especially if you have a true deformity. If one leg's shorter by like an inch, then we can build this up with a custom orthotic. So one case where a custom orthotic might be beneficial is in a true limb length deformity. So take a look, see the difference between a custom orthotic and an over-the-counter orthotic. You could see one's a lot meatier and more supportive, and you can make modifications to make it unique for your particular limb length discrepancy. So an orthotic, combined with a great shoe can make all the difference. And you can measure with your podiatrist how much you need in each shoe, how much you need in an orthotic. If the shoes and the orthotics aren't doing it, an ankle brace can really do it. So there are different types of ankle braces. There's ones for, to compress your foot and prevent swelling, but there's ones that hold your legs straight. You can even build up a lift in the brace because sometimes an orthotic is not enough. Uh, a lot of the times I see patients get an orthotic and they're like, hey, this thing's not working. And the next question is, did it feel better with it or without it? And they're like, oh yeah, it's a, it's a million times better with it, but it's still not solving every single one of my problems. So maybe a brace can help at that point. And now a brace, an orthotic, a shoe, using shockwave therapy, using lasers, stretching, massaging, that can make all the difference as you add all that stuff up. The next thing is really, if you do have arthritis or a knee replacement or hip replacement that did not go well or scoliosis, and you're working on a factory floor or you're trying to be a weightlifter, maybe you need to cross train. Maybe running isn't going to be the best sport for you. Maybe biking will be better. Maybe swimming, maybe water aerobics. So there's a lot of options out there. And as a podiatrist, we can write you letters for modified job activity for maybe taking a rest until things get better. After you get the massage and the brace and the shoe and the home slippers and the sandals and everything, you want to do good rehab to ensure that your body stays flexible. So you want to do good stretching and there's some great equipment that can help with that. So with more support, take a look at this guy. He's flexible, his heels line up with his calf muscles, with his thighs, he's equal, he's symmetrical. Running here uses less energy, it gets less sore, and you can keep doing it without getting in pain. Whereas look at this person, they're all over the place, they're jumping side to side, their inside of the ankle is going to get really sore. Their plantar fascia is going to get really stretched out. The inside of the knee is going to hurt because the knee's twisting and it compensate for the foot twisting out. This is a big problem. You can't do this for long or until an old age. So what was happening with that person is kind of what's happening here. My left foot is tighter than my right foot, so it has to turn out. See how it's externally rotating there? As your foot externally rotates or pronates, 
then your knee has to compensate by turning in. That's called genu valgum. So what happens is if you have a difference between muscle flexibility, your corresponding legs, ligaments, and muscles have to make up for that. So exercising, warming up can make a big difference. I get up in the morning, I roll my ankles. That gets the blood flowing, it gets the inflammation out of there, especially if you're sore. And what happens is you want to massage roll, you want to warm up, see how much I can touch right there. I would not be able to do that after a full few days of walking on my feet and not stretching and not massaging. Then you can use a towel or you can use gravity to help stretch. So we're talking our hamstrings, our calf muscles, our lower back, our glutes. You can get all those going. This is a favorite stretch right here because it holds your feet turned up. This stretches your calf muscles, your plantar fascia, your hamstrings, you get it all in one go. And we're talking just a couple minutes of massaging in the morning and a couple minutes of stretching. You don't have to make this a one hour yoga routine every single day. And that might actually be contraindicated. One thing that I like is an ankle stretch board. So after you massage or use your shockwave therapy or laser with your podiatrist to break up scar tissue, you get this thing near your counter or when you brush your teeth and see you start at a low level and every couple of weeks you move it up. That means your calf muscles stretch, your hamstrings stretch, your plantar fascia stretches. That can start getting you in pretty good shape in a measured level where every couple weeks you're getting more and more flexible and you're making up for your tight limb length discrepancy. If that helped, click on this flat foot treatment. Give us a comment, give us a like. It makes a big difference keeping us motivated and making more great videos for you. Thank you.